شعت شموس الهدي بالكلمات فنارت الأفهام بالآيات أسرج بنور العلم عصنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين Our topic today will be about محرم and عاشوراء and how to benefit from عاشوراء But before we start into the topic, I would like to give a short introduction This introduction is about that everyone has questions Two problems that they ask The first problem is something more theoretical the second problem is something more methodical. The first problem is that us as human beings tend to ask question, is this theoretically true? How and why? And we want to find out the truth about something. Like a child, if you realize that a child has so many questions and they try to find out the answer to it, and these questions are related to our path and are related to who we are, and are related to our faith. If one did not have an answer to this question, he or she will live in confusion. They will live lost. And that's why in Mafatih al Jinan, we read in one of Imam Hussein alayhi salam al Ziyara, Wahayrat al Dalala, the misguidance has a confusion. Someone being confused, not knowing what to do, where they're heading, not knowing the purpose of this life. We live happy. We know why we're here in this world. We know the purpose of why we're in this world. We feel satisfied. We know the answer to our questions. But the people who don't, they feel lost. Those people who have lost their identity, they don't know where, where they came from, why they're in this world, where they're heading. They don't know what's the unknown, what they're, what they're waiting for. That one feels like they're living in a desert. And you know, it's like living in a desert. You don't know if this path will end and when will it end. You don't know if it's secure. They feel lost. They feel confused. Walking through a desert, not knowing whether the water you have to drink water is enough or whether a tiger or a lion will suddenly come out and eat you. So you feel lost morally and you feel lost outwardly now this word is mentioned in Mafatih al-Jinan it means to rescue the confused from being misguided and being confused and misguided morally is the same as being misguided outwardly and being misguided morally is even worse than being misguided outwardly because when you're misguided outwardly, you're in a desert, you die, a tiger eats you, your life ends. But being misguided morally, you don't know where this will lead you to or when will this end. Therefore, this word, To rescue us from ignorance, from confusion, and, mis and being misguided. This is the feeling that our youth have been experiencing today when they lost their identity. You see them that they're lost. You see them from the outside, they're organized, they're educated, they're financially successful. But in the inside of them, they feel confused. They have this feeling that they're lost in their life. This is how most of the Western live today and most of our young youths or young adults are experiencing the same because they lost their identity. We see today in the West that from the outside, they're happy, they're educated, they're celebrating, they're, they have a financially stable. But if you zoom in the inside, you see them that they're confused, they're depressed, they're misguided. And that's why we see so many Western people are converting to Islam. Some countries, they ban ladies from wearing the hijab. And you see that Islam media plays a great role in Islamophobia. It works day and night 
to ruin the name of Islam, making us terrorists so that the West does not convert to Islam. And if they wanted to convert to Islam, they will have this name about Islam. Muslim people are terrorists. They get scared to meet a Muslim person. They're scared from something called Islam. Why? It's because they don't want that this Western person who's lost and living in confusion to be guided from a Muslim. But what you see, there are, there are Western people today that are still searching. And they're searching for the purpose of this life. One of the reasons that brings one into Islam is the case of death. The questions come into their mind. What is after death? The West doesn't have an answer, a sufficient answer to this. But when they come to Islam, they find all the answers to their questions. The Quran answers all these questions. Thus, this is the first problem that they suffer from. But when it comes to the case of Ashura, you find that Karbala and the awakening of Imam Hussein alayhi salam has returned our identity back to us has given us an identity. If we knew how to spread the word of Karbala in a better way, today we would have took out our youth from this problem that they suffer from and return back their identity, take them out from being lost, from being confused, and from being misguided. How many millions, millions of people that we know that or we don't know that were misguided and they had lost their identity, found it from the awakening of Ashura. Someone named Father al-Dirbandi, it's narrated in his book that one of the big people of the Hindus has said to him that millions of Hindus were able to convert to Islam because of the confusion that they were living in. But what happened is that they started to make fights between Muslims and Hindus so they started to attack places and make problems and create fire from one another so that the Hindu will not speak to a Muslim and the Hindu will not find from a Muslim to know more about Islam. So what they did is they build a wall between them. So one day that that Hindu will not come to a Muslim and become a Muslim. That wall that they created between the Hindus and the Muslims they created it today between the West and the Muslim about terrorism. So that one day that Western person does not think of becoming a Muslim because all they know about us is that we're terrorists. That Hindu who narrates his story, he said, I left India and came to Karbala to become a Shia. Watch how Imam Hussein alayhi salam changes people's lives and has given back their lost identity and had guided them. And that is why we read that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam has rescued people from being misguided and being in ignorance and confusion. And when Imam al Mahdi, ajallallahu ta'ala, farajuh, may Allah hasten his reappearance, when he appears, his speech is about the awakening of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and what happened to him. And what he said, and what Imam Hussein sacrificed for, he says, Ya Ahl al Alam, in Najadi al Hussein, Qataluh Achanan. He says, O oh people of this world, my grandfather Hussein has been martyred and murdered thirsty. The second problem that people question and suffer from today is more methodical. And what I mean by this is that there is a word that has been used by scholars that the case of a structure is defined into two things. The intellect, meaning when you wake up the morning and you want to pray salah, for example, salat al-subuh. When you wake up to pray salat al-subuh, you time your phone on a certain time, but sometimes you can't wake up. You only wake up to turn off your alarm. The action that you take, every action that you take to wake up and to turn off the alarm is in need of evolution. Another example, when you begin your salah, can you aim not to think about anything but your salah? How many seconds can we control our thoughts during our prayers? Try not to think about anything but the salah. 
And this is in need of a control to your inner evolution. Once you are able to control your intellect, your mind, and not think about anything other than your salah, you will be able to do so. We believe that the rule of prayers is in need of a, of, of a motivation. Who gives us that motivation? We believe that the tragedy of Karbala and the awakening of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam gives us this motivation. Salah is very important. The Quran is very important. One of the reasons of this awakening is because it gives you the energy, it motivates you to pray. It motivates you to read the Quran, to learn. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he is the spoken Quran on the day of Karbala. In Karbala, how did Imam al-Husayn's companions have this energy in the hot sun, in a desert, with thirst? They managed to have this motivation and energy. Who gave this to them? The spiritual, their moral and their spiritual motivates them. And it motivates us today. And every time you enter a majlis or you read a book about Karbala, you realize how it motivates you. It motivates the inside of you. In Iraq, the dictator government used to put men in prison and torture them. Who used to give them the challenge and the patience? One of the things was the awakening of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Someone like Sahib al Jawahir, he spent 25 years in prison. After he came out, he published a popular, famous Shia book named Al Jawahir. Imam Hussein alayhi salam plays a huge role. What is our role today? To spread the message to the people about who is Imam Hussein alayhi salam and what he suffered from. Because many people are suffering from confusion, the ignorance, and being misguided. As parents, we should start from our home. We should teach our children, educate our children to create a generation that isn't lost, to create a generation, to make sure that our kids are growing in such a country, they don't lose their identity. The educational background in schools does not create an engagement of our kids. They don't teach them anything about Karbala and the history of Karbala. It's our responsibility that we teach our children and raise them. Hearing stories of Ali al-Akbar, of Al-Qasim, of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. All those stories will create motivation and engage them to Islam, to pray, to be a better person. It will answer all their questions. The tragedy of Karbala will answer your child's questions. Why we pray? Why we're here in this world? Try to read to your children at bedtime for a bedtime story, a story of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, and see how they get raised. Secondly, our responsibility is to spread the message to the world and to educate them on what happened in Karbala and who Imam al Hussein salam is. And nowadays, it's very easy to do so because of the technology that we have from internet, publishing books, to making pamphlets, to making newsletters. So it's our responsibility. And to conclude, all those things we do give us barakah and blessings in our lives. And inshallah, we will try hard to work on those steps as much as we can. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabina Muhammadin wa ala ali baytihi tayyibin al-tahirin. Ihna haqiqatan ila kunna natamakkan an nata'amal ma'aqadiyyat al-imam al-Husayn salawatullahi alayh بشكل أف كنا نتمكن أن نخرج شبابنا من هذه الحالة اللي الآن يعيشون فيها كنا نتمكن أن ننقذ الغربيين من هذا الضياع وهذه الحيرة التي يعيشون فيها